Welcome back, Mike Blakely and Mark. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're, about, we're about to pull the trigger on some of those songs right here. That's what we're doing. So let's start out a little mellow and then we'll kick it in gear and we'll just do whatever we want to do. How about that? All right then. All right then. <laughs> okay. I'm with you. Here's another little uh, semi uh, bittersweet cowboy song. I'm I'm really big on the bittersweet cowboy song charts, so it's um uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Sunrise on the Rancho Quien Sabe That's a sight I've been wanting to see I hope you understand Just gotta get back while I still remember the way If you want me Darling, you know where I'll be You can find me Out on the Rancho Quien Sabe Hope you don't mind me Staying out there a while I think I'll probably just hang around there until the north wind blows Quien sabe, darling, who knows You could call me But it ain't got no mailbox could write me but it ain't got no phone you could get there if you'd been there before but no one can show you the way come morning guess I'll be leaving alone but you can find me out on the Rancho Quien Sabe Hope you don't mind me Staying out there a while I think I'll probably Just hang around there until The green grass grows Quien Sabe Darling, who knows? Rancho Quien Sabe Guitars By the old campfires glow I might be thinking of you I might be wishing I'd never left you at all Quien Sabe Darling you Never know unless you find me out on the rancho can save. Hope you don't mind me staying out there a while. I think I'll probably just hang around there until. 
the gray sky snow Kinsabe, darling, who knows? Kinsabe means darling, who knows? Gracias. <laughs> Do we have any Gary P. Nunn fans in the, in the house here? I figured, me too. So uh, years ago, I pitched a song to Gary P. And well, I knew where he was recording in the hill country there. And uh, I guess he really needed songs because he, t- he took this song and he recorded it. I wrote this with Mike Siler and Larry Nye. And it's called It's About to Get Western. It's a kind of an upbeat rodeo song. It's a lot of fun. But when Gary recorded it, you got to remember this was, this was I, I'm, I wasn't as cool back then as I am now either. I, was, <laughs> I get it. In fact, in fact I, I was it. kind of a jerk, you know, and right. I was very insecure and everything, you oh know. My. So Gary P. recorded this, and he changed one line and maybe the melody a little bit. And I got kind of, you know, upset about it. I said, why did he go changing my song like that? You know, I made that melody. Who do you think he is? You know? But then um, I got the first royalty statement or in the first royalty <laughs> check in the mailbox. And I thought, you know, Gary P. sings pretty good through the mailbox. I think, <laughs> I'm, I think everything's going to be all right. I'm impressed with the royalty check part. <laughs> yeah, I know. He, he, tried, he, he wanted to use one of my songs, but he wanted me to sign all over, over the rights to him. To it. Oh. So we weren't friends for a, till he got over it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, he still plays this in his live shows. It's called It's About to Get Western. One, a two, three. The good old boy, the riding brim, brim from the ranch to the rodeo. Oh, Tom, it draws a wild one. A little bronc called Smokey Joe. Smokey Joe ain't never been rode, but Tommy ain't never been throwed. As he settles into the buck and shoot, he says, boys, here comes the show. Cause it's about to get western around here tonight. Yeah, that's right. You better wear your working clothes and pull your hat down tight. Hey, it's about to get western I don't mean it might I'm about to get western In the music room tonight Well, Tom is spending all the prize money Later on buying drinks at the dance He's making eyes at the rodeo queen And he figures she's worth the chance To some big bulldogger by the name of Earl Says Tommy that's my girl And as he ducks Earl's knuckles So Tom starts to chuckle Says, well, all right, let her whirl Cause it's about to get western Around here tonight You better wear your working clothes And pull your hat down tight Hey, it's about to get western I don't mean it might about to get western around here tonight I'll bear down on one more woman She drags big girl to the pickup truck And a cute cowgirl grabs Tommy by the hand Pulls him towards the dance floor hollering at the band Well it's about to get western Right here tonight walks the hatchy on Saturday night You better wear your working clothes and pull your hat down tight Hey it's about to get western I don't mean it might about to get western 
around here tonight Try to get a western, I don't mean it might Try to get a western, the cowboy's delight <laughs> Kind of surprised me on the ending there <clears throat> I gotta stay on my toes yeah, with gotta you. Keep, uh, yeah, you gotta look over here every now and then. Uh. All right, Tim. <laughs> uh, you'll, you'll, you'll know what to do. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I got a little bit of my wine left here, so let's let's do a holler and a swaller. It's a hill country tradition. Count to three, and then you probably learned this from Thomas Michael Riley or somebody like that. Count to three, and on, the, on three, we'll holler and then take a swaller. It's called a holler and a swaller on the count of three. If you don't have a drink, a pretend. One, two, three. <laughs> and swallow. <sighs> that part's optional here. You got that. Now, I'm, I'm drinking some uh, fine Tempranillo wine that was given to me by a very nice lady here. And so if you're drinking wine, you can do a yip and a sip instead of a holler and a swallow. <laughs> <laughs> you're drinking... Watch you're drinking the beer. Finger. Keep the little finger. Yeah, I got a pinky. If you're drinking beer, you can do a burp and a slurp or whatever you like. <laughs> slurp and a burp. But I, I started, yeah, I learned the holler and swaller from Thomas Michael Riley down there at Luke and Bach. Everybody would want us to do the holler and swaller, so I did. And became part of the act. And then uh, Luke and Bach, Texas, asked me if I would do this show that they wanted to start on Sundays called Cowboy Church. And I said, well, you know, I don't know enough gospel songs to, like, fill up the whole three hours or whatever. And they said, no, Blakely, just, just play your usual crap. We're just going to call it church. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. So, And you said, hallelujah. Hallelujah is right. Amen. <laughs> so, but here's what happened. I got to the Cowboy Church, and I wanted to do the holler and the swaller, but even though it was just called church, it just didn't seem appropriate. You know, I didn't I didn't grow up in an organized religion. I'm a Methodist. So uh, <laughs> So I, I didn't didn't feel right doing the holler and a swaller, so I changed it to a hallelujah and a swaller to you. <laughs> yeah, I think and, uh, on Monday I called Luke and Bach and said, "Well, you know, how that first cowboy church go is everything okay there they said oh yeah we love cowboy church the bar did great <laughs> <laughs> amen to that mark <laughs> yeah must, must have had some baptists there <laughs> <laughs> from out of town yeah baby. <laughs> that's a true story <laughs> these songs I was saving from the first uh, set because I wanted a uh, guitar player like a, a really good one. And we didn't have one. And so so uh, yeah. Mark decided to do it instead. <laughs> yeah. And now I can't remember him. I think, oh, here's one. Okay. Okay, this is the first uh, song I wrote with Walt Wilkins and uh, we got together that morning and he invited me to write a song with him and I invited him to come out to my little ranch I had up there in Burnett County and he came out there and we started talking about things and, and the reason I'm telling you this is because all these things started later wound up in the in the song. Uh, there was a red winged blackbird on the overlook in the, the stock tank. It's what, you know, it's really a pond and if you're a rancher you got to call it a stock tank. Yeah. It's a more romantic way to say pond actually. Mm -hmm. There's a red winged blackbird there that's in the song. The sun was shooting down through this gap in the hills. That's part of the song. But also, Walt told me about how he met uh, his wife, Tina, in Nashville years before. And he was playing a gig at this bar where she was tending bar. And uh, you can imagine they hit it off, you know. And uh, and they started dating. They fell in love. You know, mm. Of course, everybody knows this now. And Walt said he grows a garden every springtime. But that particular year, after meeting Tina, best garden he ever had he said the garden just took off and went went crazy and he said mike blakely i'll tell you one thing a man in love can sure make a garden grow and i said walt i don't know what song we're writing but that's going in it so <laughs> that's how we wrote this here song called this time of year
on the highest cattail reef on the west bank of the pond the red winged blackbird sings like a gondolier in the day's first ray of sun shooting down through the mountain pass it's like a bullet from a gun baby this time of year and across old mexico over the sierra madre range man you ought to see them roll on their way here they can dark and high noon rattle these old canyon walls but they make the cactus this bloom, baby, this time of year And I found you This time of year The last frost long gone And the summer near It just goes round and round But it always comes back here I fall more in love with you this time of year There's one thing I know Is that a man in love Can sure make a garden grow Honey, just look right here We got the sweet corn by the pound Red tomatoes on the vine Come straight out of the ground This time of year This time of year The last frost long gone And the summer near It just goes around and round But it always comes back here Comes right back here I fall more in love with you this time of year just goes round and round, but it always comes back here. I fall more in love with you this time of year. All right. Good job, Mark. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Mark has never heard that song before there, but uh, he kind of nailed it after. After the first 14 to 15 shots at it. Yeah, this fell, all fell right into place. I, I found a note. <laughs> I only got 12 notes. It took me 14 times. <laughs> I think we don't know. It's a, little, it's a little smoother than that, you know. Get off your low horse. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Step up, boy. <laughs> all right, I want to play for y'all. Uh, this is a great one for mark to pick on to them this is the oldest song i know because it was written probably in the 1880s by real working cowboys trail drivers is this an original in co- yeah <laughs> I, I set them up you knock them down yeah, there you go. <laughs> we'll be here all night folks. <laughs> yeah, this, is, uh, this is mark gorman on the lead guitar and punch lines <laughs> It was written by real trail drivers in, in Colorado. It's called the Colorado Trail. I, I learned a bunch of these old cowboy songs years ago because I was writing this character in one of my novels, and he was a drifting cowboy musician, and I wanted to know the songs that he knew so I could make him a convincing character. So I learned a bunch of them, and this is the one I'm still doing, and I really love this song. It's just a pretty song, and the story behind this song is that in 1929, 
a doctor was walking through his hospital in Duluth, Minnesota, and he heard this old raspy and yet beautiful voice singing somewhere in the hospital. And this was a musically inclined physician. He played the piano and probably write music notes down. And so he followed his ears and he found this this old cowboy in one of the room or one of the big rooms there with a bunch of other patients gathered around him and and he had gotten bucked off of a horse the old cowboy had and and he was in traction there and so the the other patients were gathering around he was singing them these old cowboy songs in, in minnesota and uh so the doctor asked him he said you know what's the origin of that song that's the one they wanted to hear the most was the colorado trail and he said well you know when i was a kid i moved out there to colorado wanted to become a cowboy that's my cowboy voice when i do that right there that's, that kind of a prairie home companion kind of thing, but you know. <laughs> he said, you know, we just made that song up. Whatever happened that day, we'd put it in the dang song. So the song got 150 verses. I can't remember but four of them, but you know. <laughs> so years later, he moved back to Minnesota when he got on up in years, and the rest of his family was helping to take care of him. And so he was singing this song in Duluth, and if he hadn't done that, well, this... And if the doctor hadn't heard it and wrote down the lyrics and the notes, the song would have probably just drifted away on the prairie winds. But it was preserved, and it's called the Colorado Trail. Ride through a lonely night Ride through the day Keep the herd moving Moving on its way Weep all ye little rains Wail winds wail All along, along, along Colorado Trail Eyes like the morning star Cheeks like a rose Laurel was a pretty girl God Almighty knows Weep all ye little rains, wail winds wail. All along, along, along the Colorado Trail. I'd stayed in Abilene, warm and safe and dry. Weep all ye little rains, wail winds wail. All along, along, along the Colorado. Colorado Trail. That's a great, 
great tune, man. Why don't you sing a song? And I'll just kind of sit here really? Sing some harmony or something. Oh, that'd be cool. That's very kind of you. I lost my mom unexpectedly in 2016. I, uh, I told Kelly, I said, oh, we need to go by and, and, and see the folks on a Monday. And, um, and on we did, and we got busy. Uh, and then on Tuesday, I had taken off work and had a doc's appointment. And I said, well, after that, we've got to go by. And so we were pulling in. We got the, we got the call that she was just gone. I mean, it was just, it was just like that. It was uh, just a, a few, a uh, couple of months before, we had played a show at Poor David's Pub, and, and uh, she had come. It was it was the last show that that she'd come to, and I called her a couple of days after, and I said, "Well, mom, what did you think?" You know, and she said, "Oh, it was the best concert I've ever been to," which is pretty hot cotton because I'd taken her to see James Taylor uh, once before, and we were sitting there, and uh, every song James would play, "Oh, that's my favorite song. That's my favorite," you know. And at one point, she was looking around like she lost them. I said, "Mom, what's the matter?" She said, what's that smell? I said, well, it's pot, Mom. She said, well, I don't like that smell. I said, well, don't inhale. <laughs> About 15 minutes later, James Taylor is lighting into some steamroller blues. Mom's digging through her purse. I said, what, what's wrong now? And she pulls out her flashlight, and she turns it on and starts waving it on her head, above her head, saying, woo. <laughs> Dad would never let me take her back to another. Yeah, she inhaled apparently. <laughs> yes, yeah, so that was it. But uh, I was so so excited that, that she had gotten to come to to the show and and that she enjoyed it so much. She said it was her favorite concert. I'm sure she's seen many many better concerts since then. Uh, but um, uh, I wrote a song, and um, that's what we do. <laughs> this isn't really about mom although i do pay homage to her in the song it's really about you and me this is about us this is about the relationship that you and i share and how important it is to nurture those relationships to say i'm sorry quickly and i love you often and uh to be faithful in all things and and uh gentle uh as much as we can be and so this is called 2016 do my 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 2016 took you from me missed you by only a day hey now regret can grow deep if you let it fester away Everyone ask how dad is doing I say he's doing just fine Oh, but now we both know the new normal We'll catch him in time Life has a clock that's ticking Each moment is measured in breath What will you do with the ones that you have left? You still have left do Morning can come like a hammer We get up and swing it again We can even run with the rats in the next lane To the one that we're racing in Nobody knows where he's going But he's Headed there fast as he can Trying to grasp a hold of that golden ring Fashioned by man Life has a clock that's ticking Each moment is measured in breath What will you do with the ones that you have left? You still have left do It seems like she 
just said her first word But she's headed to college today You turn around with a tear in your eye As you give her away Life has a clock that's ticking Each moment is measured in breath What will you do with the ones that you have left? It's chicken. Each moment is measured in breaths. And what will you do with the ones you have left? Baby, you still have. Do. Do. You still have left, yeah. Ooh, ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do my, my, my. Well, 2016 took you from me. Mom, I missed you for only one day. <laughs> Mike Luckley, everybody. That's nice. Thank you. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play a song about my favorite tough guy from the movies. Ooh. Who's, who's y'all's favorite tough guy from the movies? Just shout it out. Who you got? Lee Marvin was a good choice. John Wayne. Who? Sean Connery. Yeah, you got to love Sean Connery. (laughs) Ernest? (laughs) Pee Wee Wee Herman? Who said that? The Duke. Yeah, yeah. The Duke, yeah. Well, those are all good choices. You you got your Charles Bronson. You got Steve McQueen. Steve McQueen was a good one. Robert Mitchum, yeah, they're a bunch of tough guys, but my my Audie Murphy was a real tough guy. My favorite tough guy from the movies, though, was that little dog from The Wizard of Oz, Toto. I mean, just I can qualify this. Just think about it. I mean, he was only about 12 and a half pounds of furry fury, but he'd chase the lion right up a tree. He wasn't afraid of the Wicked Witch's spells. And what was the third thing? Oh, yeah, he he wasn't afraid of flying monkeys. Just jump right on one and take a ride. Amen. That's right. That was the scariest thing about the movie is those flying yeah. monkeys. So uh, I got to thinking about Toto. I thought I'd write him a song, but I wanted to write it from his point of view. So I, wrote, I read his auto dog biography, written, <laughs> which he barked to a stenographer about 1931. So this is all true. The good thing about this song is that later on we all get to bark like a dog towards the end of the song. Here I go. My name is Toto. I'm a Kansas puppy. I got lost in Oz on my way to Kentucky. I hate flying monkeys, I didn't like the farm The only place to me that ever held any charm Was this little town that's got it all Called Wichita, that's right So put your ruby slippers on and click your heels We're going to Wichita Put your ruby slippers on and click your heels We're going to Wichita, that's right as soon as we cross that Kansas line, we're gonna leave the yellow brick blues behind. Gone to Wichita, Wichita, we're gone to Wichita. Y'all may be wondering, Toto, why Wichita? Well, it was a process of elimination. Here's what he said. He said, Kansas City just moves too fast. He said, old Dodge City's living in the past. 
But there's one place I'd like to go I seen it from the twister way down below The sweetest sight I ever saw And it was Wichita So put your ruby slippers on And click your heels, we're gonna Wichita Put your ruby slippers on And click your heels, we're gonna Wichita As soon as we cross that Kansas line We're gonna leave the yellow brick blues behind Gone to Wichita, Wichita Why don't you ride that hot air balloon all the way to Wichita? Wichita. You, you know something. You may be also wondering how Toto felt about his co-stars in The Wizard of Oz. He wrote about that in his autodog biography, too. Here's what he said. Tin Man was a bucket of rust. Scarecrow blew away in a gust He said the king of the forest was a big bad lion The last time I saw him back in Oz he was crying Had a little sticker in his paw Oh, let's go to Wichita, Dorothy, come on So put your ruby slippers on and click your heel We're gonna Wichita Put your ruby slippers on and click your heels We're gonna Wichita As soon as we cross that Kansas line We're gonna leave the yellow brick blues behind Gone to Wichita Wichita all the way to Wichita Now as I promised you When we do it, we hit the brake like that Y'all can bark like Toto Toto would love it if you do it in his memory you can bark like Benji if you can't bark like Toto. <laughs> or Lassie or Cujo or Rin Tin Tin. You can scream like a cougar if you want to, whatever. I mean, I want some real wholesome barking here. Gotta say. So put your ruby slippers on and click your heels. We're gonna witch it all. Put your ruby slippers on and click your heels. We're gonna witch it all. Across that Kansas line where you know you're on video, right? Go on to Wichita, Wichita, take us on home to Wichita, Mr. Go. I tried the force a little. <laughs> <laughs> the force, I might have forced it a little too okay. much. Right oh, Got TMI. A little lightheaded. A little too much information. How <laughs> 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 I many fingers am I holding up right now? <laughs> <laughs> too much people uh, <laughs> I do appreciate y'all barking along, though. Yeah. That feels good to bark, doesn't it? I hope nobody gets fixed. Thank you. you <laughs> thank you for your service. We thank you for your service. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now for something completely different. Because why would we play the same song two times in a row? Practice. <laughs> Practice. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see here. 
I was having so much fun on that song, I forgot to think of a next song to sing. But uh, oh, it don't matter. We just it don't matter. That's right. I'll, I'll come up with something here. It's probably going to be a bittersweet cowboy song, well, you know. <laughs> well, ago you said key of B, and I thought that was interesting. I heard B. You said D. Yeah. You said you said <laughs> D, but I heard B, and I thought that's interesting. I got one of those. I hardly use it. <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, I landed on it, and That's, someone right. That would be Mark modulating the wrong direction, I did. wouldn't it? <laughs> All right, let's play something. Uh, let's play another song you don't know. This is this is fun to watch you uh, p- figure these things out on the do the math. On the, yeah. Okay, here's here's a song by Golly. Here's a song about your ca- your hat. This is a new cowboy hat I got here, and then I'm breaking it in because that's what you got to do. It's about how to break in your own hat and don't expect anybody else to do it for you. Right. I used to know uh, Manny Gamage, the Texas hatter, the late great hat maker from down the hill country, and and Manny, uh, he he was a storyteller. He was like he was a raconteur, right there in his own hat shop. He would tell stories while he's making hats. And I was in his hat shop one day, and um, he started telling this story about how Tommy Lee Jones wrote, wrote him a letter wanting a, a hat. See, Manny made hats for real working cowboys, rodeo cowboys, real ranchers, but also for movie stars and, and country music stars and anybody else. So he had worked with Tommy Lee before, and this was back in the 1900s, before we had emails or any of that. So he got, a, he got an actual letter from Tommy Lee Jones, who said, hey, I want a hat for this new movie I'm making. It's called The Good Old Boys. Oh, man. And he said, what I want My is this movie. silver belly Stetson with a five-inch brown pencil rolled all around the edge like this one is here. Rattlesnake hat man, that crease that I like, Tommy said. He liked that funny little crease. Um, next. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He said, that crease I like. And uh, he said, and by the way, uh, Manny, it's for the movies, and I'm supposed to be portraying a real working cowboy, so distress it for me. <laughs> And Manny said he made the hat pretty much those specifications. He put it in a box and with an invoice and a letter back to Tommy Lee that said, Tommy Lee, here's the hat you wanted, silver belly Stetson, five-inch brim, pencil row, rattlesnake, Tom Mix crease, and distress it your own damn self. <laughs> Man, Manny was a sculptor of hats, and you don't ask a sculptor to make a sculpture and then just kick dirt all over it, you know? You just put, do that on your own. So it inspired me. It gets better. I bought a brand new Stetson hat, y'all. It was a pretty good one. A hundred X's. Found it on sale rack, a little hat shop down in Texas. I got a good deal on it, cause it had one little flaw. Just a rough spot on the crown there. That was all. You see, I figured in the long run that one little spot wouldn't matter. Cause when it's all said and done and all torn and tattered, well, that one imperfection will not stand alone. I'm gonna make this hat my own. Yes, I am. It's the way you grab the brim a thousand times before you hang it. The busting through mesquite limbs and the sky through which you fling it. Yeah, the rain may wash away the dust, but it leaves your sweat alone. I'm gonna make this hat my own. Meanwhile, back at the hat shop. <clears throat> About then, this young dude walked in. Danged if his wranglers weren't pressed. He said, I want a brand new brim, and I want mine distressed. The Haddon man frowned a little at the boy as he handed me my change. He said, son, that way of thinking strikes me strange. He said, I ain't just some sales clerk. I build all these hats Every day there's more work in that sweatshop in the back And kicking dirt on my own handiwork ain't something I condone You 
gonna have to do that on your own, boy. Cause it's the way you grab the brim a thousand times before you hang. The busting through mesquite limbs and the sky through which you fling it. Yeah, the rain may wash away the dust, but it leaves your sweat alone. That's how you make that hat your own. Oh, make that guitar your own here. Applause for Mark Gorman up here. That's how you make that guitar your own right there. <laughs> it's the way you grab the brim a thousand times before you hang it. The busting through mesquite limbs and the sky through which you fling it. Yeah, the rain may wash away the dust, but it leaves your sweat alone. Son, you gotta make that hat your own. Hang on, boy, there's still more. There's a scorching and the freezing on the ranges where you take it. The grit and grime of seasons, boy, there ain't no way to fake it. It's the bar room and the campfire smoke, the embers from the Brandon. And it's what you're down to when you're broke, held high. Cause you're still standing Oh, is every trail behind you And the heart landing when you're thrown That's how you make that hat your own Take a look at that old gray beard beside you there, boy He's gonna wear his new hat home you can bet he'll make that hat his own. Distress at your own hang self, son. You're going to have to make that hat your own. Oh, yeah. You had to break it in, right? I tip my hat to your hat, sir. <laughs> All right, we hear something a little different for you. My friend Debbie Walton from Marble Falls is a blues singer, and we started getting uh, serious about the music business about the same time. She was going more the blues route. I was going more the Americana and Texas route and country route. But she asked me she, to write a song for her first blues album. And I said, well, Debbie, I don't know if I know any uh, enough to write a blues song, but I'll try, you know, I'll give it a whirl. So this is what I came up with, and she liked it enough to to put it on her record. It's called The Night Train and the Moon. One, two, three, Well, the moon was rising and the night train did moan And I watched from the hillside alone Alone I admit I was drinking But I swear I've seen it right And Sister Moon ran away with Mr. Night Train Last night Well, the night train made his move Half a bottle past four I was drunk, y'all But I kept on drinking Some more, yeah, some more Sister Moon Said night train, I love to watch you roll. And the night train 
Said moon, you are so cool the way you glow. Sister moon ran away with Mr. Night Train last night. I was drinking, I was feeling. Yeah, now for a, uh, a sad song. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, actually, uh, actually, this song. I went to school at Stephen F. Austin State University, Axum Jacks, in Nacogdoches, the oldest town in Texas. They say. Lumber and Jacks. so uh lum lumberjacks and um yeah so um i hadn't read a hadn't, hadn't read a song <laughs> about that far east hey. and so <laughs> i figured i'd cipher about on it for a minute and come up with something and so this is what it came up with <laughs> Let's pack a bag and load the truck Head on out tonight It's been a while since we've run away And left these cares behind A little east of Tyler we'll find Highway 59, East Texas Pine 
So call your mom and let her know we won't be dropping by. Sunday after church, you know, for lunch and apple pie, cause we'll be out in Nacogdoches, where everything is fine, East Texas Pine. And oh, there's no better place to go to ease your mind. Oh, from the pressures of this heavy world, it's easy if we let it go, let ourselves unwind. And baby, oh, there's no better place to go to ease your mind. Oh, from the pressures of this heavy world, it's easy if we let it go and let ourselves unwind. Not too far from where we are, a forest paradise. Of gentle giants in the breeze, they're dancing side by side. Little east of Jacksonville, on Highway 59, East Texas Pine. East Texas Pine. East Texas Pine. Yeah. I don't know about y'all, but I'm having a ridiculous time. How about you? <laughs> you know, if y'all ever need a reference as an audience, just call us. And That's we'll, right. <laughs> put in a good we'll word for you. We'll give you a you. good grade. <laughs> it's just an A plus, man. Yeah. Uh, we got time for a couple more songs, though, don't we? Yeah. But, well, I got two songs, and, and they're both 25 minutes long. So just get com <laughs> get comfortable. And uh, here's a, here's a song by golly. And, uh, you know, I don't know about y'all, but I've been lucky enough to live probably 80% of my life down about a mile or two of dirt or gravel road or mud road sometime back in the day. Uh, right now I live down, yeah, about a mile of road, and there's four gates between us and the pavement that you have to open to get in there. Luckily, we got the little electric clickers. But, they, <laughs> but that's where we like to do. My wife Annie and I live in Gillespie County in a beautiful little place there, and but it wasn't always that way. I mean, I grew up down a dirt road, and um, but there are times in my life when I had to go live in a city for what some reason or another. I was in the military, so I lived in you know Albuquerque, and yeah, that's a city to me. You know, I was a country boy, mm -hmm. and uh, I went to school at that there uh, UT uh, at Austin. I went that's Austin, Texas. You know, mm. I remember one time I was in Austin. I hadn't been out back to the country to see my folks in a while. And uh, I decided to take a drive around the edge of town so at least I could, like, see some countryside. This was when there was some countryside around Austin, you know. <laughs> by, and I got I came across a place where somebody had run over a skunk. And I smelled that skunk and went, that reminds me of home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm homesick. That's real. <laughs> Mama's cooking. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Mama's cooking. Mama's Mama's cooking cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> I love cabbage. <laughs> so uh, I got to thinking about that. And I, I wrote this song with a friend of mine, and he lived in Dallas when we co-wrote this song, Dr. Ken Garrett. And uh, he t it's a song about you know wanting to get back to a, a simpler way of life out in the country in a small town. And he took it very seriously. After we wrote this song, he moved from Dallas to Granite Shoals in the Hill Country. So it just changed his whole life. This is the name of the song is a, a Town Called Paradise. I can read it on your face. You had it with this place You're sick and tired of the rat race well, Honey, I am too Traffic jams and deadlines Crime waving headlines 
smoke choke in the sunshine I tell you what let's do We'll find a place somewhere with some clear fresh air and we'll roll like a pair of dice Honey just me and you We'll look up at the stars at night Far from the big city lights In a town called paradise Population two What would we have to give up? I can deal with a pay cut Hey, let's get out of this death rut Honey, while we still can Say goodbye to the concrete Find a turn off this one-way dead-end street Let's get some grass under our feet I'm not afraid to get a little dirt on my hand We'll find a place somewhere With some clear, fresh air We'll roll like a pair of dice Honey, just me and you We'll look up at the stars at night Far from the big city lights In a town called Paradise Population 2 smile on your face Tells me you love our new place Far away from the rat race Honey, I love it too Darling, don't ever think twice I would make every sacrifice To remain here in paradise Population two. We found a place somewhere with some clear, fresh air, and we rolled like a pair of dice. Honey, just me and you. Now we look up at the stars, at the stars at night, far from the big city light. In a town called Paradise Population 2 yeah. A town called Paradise Population 2 Just me and you, babe Thank you very much. And I want to play this song for y'all about New Mexico. Y'all been in New Mexico, anybody, everybody? Probably about all of us have. Well, I lived there in New Mexico. I told y'all earlier I was stationed at Kirtland Air Force Base in Albuquerque. And, and so, you know, I grew up on the Texas coast down here, and, and my dad taught me how to fish. We would run trot lines to catch fish. Anybody all ever run any trot lines at heart? Then you on, We would sing some bait up and put it on trot line hook. By That's exactly how we did it. And we were insane about that, but you know me, it's crazy. <laughs> anyway, I got to uh, New Mexico, and I couldn't find anywhere to run a trot line. 
<laughs> so I had learned a, a new kind of fishing. I learned how to fly fish in those little mountains. And by the way, this is kind of interesting that uh, I was a helicopter mechanic in the Air Force. Now I say it's interesting because my dad, when he was drafted back in the 50s into the Army, uh, they gave him this battery of tests to determine what he was best suited to do in the military. And they said he was perfectly suited to be a helicopter mechanic. And a generation later, I joined the Air Force. They gave me some similar tests. They said I, too, was perfectly suited to be a helicopter mechanic. My grandfather said that obviously the military had figured out that he had once fixed a windmill. (laughs) (laughs) He really said that. That's a true story. (laughs) Your granddad was funny. He was a funny guy, I tell you. So anyway, I had to learn new kind of fish, and I learned to fly fish for a trout up there in the mountain. And these little bitty rivers that come out of the mountains and then disappear in the desert sometimes, you know. It reminds me of what Mark Twain said about the rivers out west, because back when he he had gotten famous already, and he made a trip, and it's still during the frontier days, he traveled by stagecoach and train and by mules and horses all the way to San Francisco and zigzagged across the west. And, of course, he wrote for the newspapers about whatever, whatever he saw and whatever was going on. Made it pretty funny, you know, being Mark Twain and all. And, of course, he grew up on the biggest river that we have, you know, the Mississippi, on the continent. And so uh, he got out west, and he said, one of my favorite things to do out west is to find what the westerners call a river and then jump back and forth across it several times until I work up a good thirst and then drink it dry. <laughs> So that's the kind of river I, I learned to fly fish in right there. And so you can catch it, maybe a big old trout in ankle deep water sometime. You just never know. From the right place at the right time. I thought about that years later, and I decided to write this song about fly fishing in New Mexico. See, Mark, I, I got I got a knack for writing songs with a huge marketing base. Fly fishermen in New Mexico. So yeah. <laughs> I was in Taos last Check last that one week. off. I sold four CDs in Taos. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is my homage to New Mexico and fly fishing, and, and I'm going to leave you all with this. And I'm sure, Y'all give Mark a big round of applause. He didn't have to do this with me. Man. It is my pleasure. It's it, my honor to sit and play with you. Well, I think it's safe to say it adds so much, doesn't it, when, we, yeah. when we've got another guy playing who can really play the guitar there and write his own songs as well. This is called My Same Old New Mexican Dream. Out past the workshops, the billboards and truck stops, west of the West Texas line. Spanish king once granted a land that was enchanted where the desert rises up to meet the pine. And it's high enough to stay cool in the summer and low enough to gather in the streams. For the wild trout and pueblos and bean fields, so goes my same old New Mexican dream. In 77, I stumbled on to heaven. I found some peace where mountain rivers flow. Where lies the promise, the cutthroats are honest. The rainbows will rise up from below. You cast your favorite pattern on the river. You mend it and you drift it through the scene. You hope for good time and the strike comes and I'm in my same old New Mexican dream. Hey, it's my same old New Mexican dream. Will my flame glow through? Yes, it can gleam. Will my aim hold true next in the stream? Yeah. In my same old New Mexican dream.
Yeah, y'all give it up for my friend Mark Gorman. So I pass the workshops, the billboards, and truck stops west of the West Texas line. A Spanish king once granted the land that was enchanted where the desert rises up to meet the pine. Hey, you cast your favorite pattern on the river. You mended and you drifted through the scene. You hope for a good time. The strike comes and I'm in my same old New Mexican dream. Hey, it's my same old New Mexican dream. Will my flame glow through? Yes, it can gleam. Will my aim hold true next in the street? Yeah. In my same old New Mexican dream. Well, it's my same old New Mexican dream. Will my flame glow through? Yes, it can gleam See that rainbow hue next in the stream yeah. In my same old New Mexican dream <laughs> All right! Thank you so much. We appreciate it. That was fun. Thank you, everybody. God bless y'all. We love you. Thank you. Thank you, my son. Yes. Thank you, Mark Gorman. Appreciate you, man.